hello everybody happy sunday it's sunday the 13th of december so we're day 13 can you believe we're day 13 already crikey so today's prompts by the lovely cara holiday food and drink bird focal point and round elements so lovely lovely suggestions so we've come to the middle of my book and i'm not going to do anything in this middle bit i might put some charms on there eventually I've just put some uh, things in the uh, one of my Patricia wallet pockets so we'll go over onto this page and uh, yes it's getting uh, I don't have the luxury of one of them moldy down things that Gail has she's got like a, a, a weight that somebody sent her but that's all right you're all right David I'll let you go <laughs> I'll let you go and do whatever you're doing right okay so um focal point I, I have used so i've used the bird from um this so from the uh, that's that's a writing board that i made um that i put in so i ought to put it in really so that uh, it flattens it down so uh my focal point i'm putting the robin in here off david's kit that dried yet my number 13 um that's going to be in the way there now isn't it if it's not dried no it has it has dried so i'll tell you what i'm going to do that pocket can go in there and i'll put another one there that's soon sorted isn't it soon sorted one one three <laughs> right i'm going to put that on first so it can be drying so hope you're all okay and if you managed to have a little bit of a lie in today i need to take my glasses off because i can't see close up i used to have some very vocals you know but i couldn't get on with them they were awful to drive in um trying to see when you're going round roundabouts to get your glasses in the right bit um i wasn't altogether safe i don't think so i stopped wearing them so I have separate reading glasses now, but I can't keep swapping. Can't sweep. So I use my reading glasses to read, uh, but I can't keep swapping and changing on it. So it's easier just to take them off. Okay, so that is my bird as my main feature, and I thought, seeing as we are doing stuff from Sherwood forest on here I was going to do some other background and now I don't know where I've put it I don't know I don't know where I've put my full pages never mind I shall put something else on let's do a little bit of collage on the other side let's have a look what we got in here did I put it in here no, oh, but I think that would go nice with it, actually. Yes, I think it will. Right, I'm just going to glue up this page then. I'm going to put my glue book, my um, writing board on that side. And I'm just going to glue directly on the page. Um, yeah, so hope you're okay i wonder if uh, here it was a big shopping day yesterday for people that want to go and uh, and be with all the crowds you know they, they start getting very busy the last couple of saturdays or so before christmas but there's no way we were going no way we're going where there's loads of people it's not worth it some people are just i don't know i just sometimes wonder if people think straight when Christmas is looming, they're just, uh, you can see them walking around and all they're thinking about is what they've got to do for Christmas, Christmas presents and Christmas food and, and, and they're not looking where they're going when they're more likely to, they're more likely to get knocked down crossing the road I reckon than, than catching anything uh, because there's, you know, they're just, you can see they've got this glazed expression on the faces and I think, crikey, they're not concentrating on, on what they're supposed to be. 
See if I can do it like this, see if I can rip it in a fashion. There. There we go. Another dull day in Yorkshire. I'm not a very good advertisement for the tourism board, am I? <laughs> oh, well, I mean, people that go walking in the Yorkshire Dales and, and, you know, are really seriously into walking, they're not bothered about the weather, are they? Um, but in the summer, you know, it can be the most beautiful place to come. But at the minute, I don't want people to come. <laughs> I want them to keep them away. So, yeah, oh, the weather's awful and it's a horrible place to live. Ha ha. <laughs> right. I'll put my board back in there. So I like that. that. That goes nice there. And I'll put them back in. Um, what else am I going to uh, use? got my round elements there so I've already made this if you remember this is something that I made to show you what you could make with David's um, the rounds off uh, the our Sherwood forest kit and so this I think we will have pinned onto there now I'll just pin it for now with a paper clip um, but I'm wondering what's on the other side. I'm wondering if I can do it with a, something a bit more permanent. I'll have to think about that. I may well do that and uh, curl that edge up a bit. Get my pliers on that and curl that edge up there. So that I might just have that on there. That's quite pretty. And then what I've got in mind for here because I'm enjoying so much looking into the traditions of things um, I thought I've, I've sort of um, found some interesting information and of three things how I food and drink I always think of Christmas pudding mince pies and I always think of mulled wine so I've got this about mulled wine and it said it's also known as spiced wine it's a beverage usually made with red wine along with various mulling spices and sometimes raisins. It's served either hot or cold. It's alcoholic, although you can have non-alcoholic versions. It's a traditional drink during winter, especially around Christmas. And it's origin, it's origins. <laughs> its origins were first recorded uh, as wine was first recorded as spice and heated in Rome during the second century so the Romans traveled across Europe conquering much of it and trading with the rest the legions brought wine and viticulture with them up to the Rhine and Danube rivers and to the Scottish border along with their recipes a medieval English cookery book called the form of Curie in 1390 mentioned mulled wine it was talked about making a parfait hypocras and that is the grinding together of cinnamon, ginger, galangal, cloves, long pepper, nutmeg, marjoram, cardamom and grains of paradise. Where it says rosemary may be substituted for grains of paradise. I've never heard of grains of paradise. This is mixed with red wine and sugar. So I thought that was really interesting. So I am going to um, put some of that in here. So first of all, I'm just going to, I don't want Wikipedia. Um, put mulled wine there. So we've got more oh wine there. And then I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to put a picture. I mean, the problem is that uh, I need to find a, a wine substitute to put in because actually I'm allergic to wine. I'm allergic to sulfides. 
uh, which is in all wine and uh, I did have a, a sort of a slight anaphylactic reaction cumulative because I used to I used to uh, always drink wine um, and they used to feel quite poorly and I thought why do I feel quite poorly and it so it turned out anyway it's the sulfites it's very very difficult to get uh, wine that hasn't got sulfites in they do sell sulfite free in the states i believe um very expensive for us to to buy it's it's usually 20 pound a bottle plus so i'm not that desperate but it would be nice to have a bottle to make some mulled wine um so anything i mean some spirits have um some spirits have wine in as well and cider does it's uh, uh we have a local uh, small little brewery that make uh cider that's not got sulfites in but it's very rare so i want to put this in here do what the thing is do i put it along there yes i will with this because i've got some other things i want to put in there so yeah, I'm going to put that on there. That's an early phone call we've had this morning. Yeah. Right. We'll put this on here. Let me move that a bit. Just put that there. Oh, I don't want it to cover my mulled wine over. Oh, no, I can't put it there. Why did I think I could put it there? Ah, I know. Look at my sticky scissors. Think on the hoof again, girl. On the hoof. Thank you. David's just arrived at the right minute. He's finished his phone call. But he's just arrived. You've just arrived at the right minute, darling, to hold that. I'm not a very clear, clear cutting. No, I don't want it sticking there. Oh, I don't know then. That, um, I'll save that bit. That bit's the origins and that's about that special curie. So that's all right. That will do us. And I'll put that on there. So that's the mulled wine. Okay, now I'm going to put... The Christmas pudding can go in the other. So the other thing that... Uh, that I've, I've looked up also is mince pies and it said the ingredients of the modern mince pie can be traced to the return of European crusaders from the Holy Land Middle Eastern methods of cooking which sometimes combined meats fruits and spices were popular at the time so pies were created from such mixtures of sweet and savoury foods in Tudor England shred pies as they were known then were formed from shredded meat suet and dried fruit the addition of spices such as cinnamon cloves and nutmeg was according to the English antiquary blah 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 because I haven't got that bit <laughs> oh dear a mince pie mince meat pie in New England and fruit mince pie in Australia and New Zealand is a sweet pie of English origin filled with a mixture of dried fruits and spices called mincemeat that is traditionally served during the Christmas season in much of the English-speaking world. Its ingredients are traceable to the 13th century when returning European crusaders bought them from the Middle East. Mince pies at Christmas tide were traditionally shaped in an oblong shape. Oh, I didn't know that. To resemble a manger and were often topped with the depiction of the Christ child. Wow, that's really interesting. I didn't know that, that they were that shaped. Very interesting. Right, so I'm going to cut that off and I'm going to put that in my pocket. So that, great. Now then, let's have, I'll have it that way so I can see my mince pies. Okay, so that's going in there. And then I have got uh, a couple of tags with robins on and I've got uh, a journaling card here that has got some um, holly on. 
So this is all bits out of the kit. In there. And then I've got a couple here which I need to I need to just punch through. Use the small one. It's all right that small one, but you can't always get it central. There we go. There we go. And I think let's have a look, see if we've got a little bit of I think that'd be nice. I've got some eyelash trim a bit in purple. And I think that'd be nice to go in there. There we go. And then that's this one done. I've put my number 13 on already with my uh, snippet roll trim and my oops and my fancy my favourite crayon. So there's nothing much to tell you. Um, we finished watching the crown and uh, so that series is done so we've got to find something else now to watch we mainly did we mainly just sat with with uh, uh, some christmas carols on yesterday and uh, and read last night because there was nothing worth watching on the television why have i just put my other one it's here I need my pokey tool just to just to poke it through. <laughs> Eyelash trim's lovely, but it isn't half a nuisance trying to get it threaded through a little hole. Let's see if I can grab the smallest of threads. It's probably that's it. <laughs> oh no, what's happened here? I'm going to do it like this. Look, you see, there's that many, all the eyelashes get in the way of you trying to tie it. I've been watching Melanie Sullivan this morning uh, because she's got another another piece from um you know the collab she's doing on the with slow stitching collab and also she had this lovely happy mail from a lovely lady that sent her loads of things and uh it, i really enjoyed it it was lovely to watch all how, how kind it was of this lovely lady to send them right so that is this one finished and i don't want to put too much on it I'm just going to uh, I'm going to put my mulled wine picture there so I'm just going to put that on and a job's a good one as they say so that's that one and I'm happy with that it's got my rounds it's got my bird as my focal point there's a few more birds in that pocket and I've got mulled wine and mince pies and uh, yeah that's that one done so they don't always have to take a long time do they so i'm going to put that back in there that's that one okay then let's do the next one so this is going to be my wrap around because it's getting so big i'll need to keep it all together so i've just clipped it for now because i don't know you know this is halfway through uh, I'll have to be a bit mindful now of how thick everything is. So that's going to be that. And uh, let's have a look. So yesterday's, I put something on there and I put some little, an angel and muff girl, muff girls there um, on the top of there because I thought it was a bit uh, plain. So I've done that. So today right well i'm sorry i've got a bit of something on there but i'm going to cover it up so what have i got 
I couldn't help but have the robin. This is slightly differently. This is the one that's got a faded in background. So it's the real photograph and then it's uh, it's faded in. So I am just going to take a smidgen off the top. But you know what I'm like with my smidgens. <laughs> They're never right. There we go. Ooh, ooh, I say. I'm impressed I've done it done it okay <laughs> so I'm just going to glue all this because we're going to stick that on top as nice as this is that I've already put on last year when I made the journal we don't need it today so there we go Okay. Don't look as if we've got enough room, does it? Left there. Right, so we've got our bird focal point. I'm not putting anything else on there, I just love it. Just love it. So I am going to put I think this is probably not going to be wide enough. I needed it the other way. I can patch it up. I did need it portrait, didn't I? But I can patch it up actually. So I'll just do that bit. This was our garden uh, when we lived in Sherwood Forest. So this is like we had this great big tree there, and we had this big willow, willow tree here. What what tree was apple. that one? Apple tree was it? Yes, I can't yes. remember. Yes, we've got six apple trees. And uh, yeah, we got snowed in that year. So that's the basis of the photographs from the... Uh, so if you don't know about uh, the kit, go and check out the shop and um, have a look at the Sherwood Forest Christmas kit because they are real photographs from Sherwood Forest that David's put into the kit. And that was our garden. I miss it. I miss that garden now. A lot of... Uh, it was big though. We're probably too much to do for us now which one am I keeping do I keep that bit of tree there now I think it looks better like that okay so get me Terry ruler again so thank you to all my new subscribers I'm slowly uh, slowly slowly building so thank you and thank you very much for everybody that comes every day I really do appreciate that Right, I'm just glue this. I'm just gluing off to the side because it takes up too much, takes up too much space. Oh, sorry, Nelson. Sorry, that's your dad interfering and you're interfering. Okay then. Had to stop it then. Poor Nelson got under my feet. I stood on his tail, poor lad. That could come down a bit. Could come down a bit. There we go, is that better? No, I'm not happy with that either. Let me glue it again. Oh! Once we stop, I lose my thread. <laughs> There's more glue on me than on the page. Right, that's better. That is better. Okay, now then. What did I want to put across the bottom there? I had some rounds, yes. So I've got some more rounds here uh, from the kit. So I'm going to do those. And I'll actually, I'm just going to do some art glitter glue on half of them. 
so I'm not going to throw them around because there could be a little tuck spot, couldn't they? There could be a little tuck. Make sure I get this right way around. It's very quiet today. People are still in bed because I think it's only what time is it, David? Please. Half ten. Half ten? Yeah. Oh yeah. A lot of people have a lying on a Sunday. We're up earlier than normal, I think, because I couldn't stop coughing. Something went down the wrong hole, my tea, and then I couldn't stop coughing. You know, it is, and then you can't stop, so it's easier to get up. <laughs> right, they're going to be tuck spots, and what I've got for this is Christmas pudding. So I have got uh, Christmas pudding for my food and drink on here. And it says... Many households have their own recipes for Christmas pudding. Some handed them down through families for generations. Essentially, the recipe brings together that what traditionally were expensive or luxurious ingredients, notably the sweet spices that are so important in developing its distinctive rich aroma and usually made with suet. Now, my nana, my mum's mum, um, she always made her own Christmas pudding, always, and she used to feed it with brandy. So she'd make it six months before, and same with the Christmas cake, then she'd put some holes in it and feed it with brandy every so often. And we used to go as children, we used to go and uh, go and help her with it and give the mixture a bit of a stir. And then she used to wrap sixpences, so... Um, for those outside of the UK, the sixpence was a very small, shiny um, coin, and was it smaller than a one pence, David, or what? bigger? A sixpence. Uh, smaller. Smaller. And um, that was a tradition for a lot of families when they made their own. She used to wrap this sixpence in muslin well wrap it in muslin and and then bury it in the mixture and so you never knew if you were going to be lucky enough to get a sixpence in your portion of the pudding and it was fantastic it used to be so magical now they're not allowed to put sixpences in it well the rep you know i suppose people can put we don't have sixpences anymore but people can put in what they want can't they but it's health and safety gone mad i mean she didn't used to put them in you know they used to be wrapped up in fact she i think after after a while she then swapped to um, putting them inside uh, greaseproof paper making little greaseproof paper bags to put them in um, so yeah that was exciting and it, very fond memories so Christmas pudding is important so we're having Christmas pudding in this one what else does it say anything else it says um uh, traditionally served part as the christmas dinner in the uk and ireland and its origins are medieval england and it was known as plum pudding though this can often refer to other kinds of boiled pudding involving dried fruit despite the name plum pudding the pudding contains no actual plums due to the pre-victorian use of the word plums as a term for raisins I mean, raisins are just dried plums, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they are. Mm -hmm. The pudding has been heavily mythologized, including the idea that it's traditionally composed of 13 ingredients, symbolizing Jesus and the 12 apostles. Well, I didn't, I had not heard that, or that it was invented by George I. Early recipes include little more than suet, dried fruit, breadcrumbs, flour, eggs and spice, along with liquid which may be milk or fortified wine. And later recipes become more elaborate. Now the shop, there's, you know, they're not the same. I don't think the shop bought ones are nowhere near as good. Nowhere near as good as um, homemade ones. So... This is going to be a tuck, so I think if I fold it like that, and oh, <laughs> I'm all excited now, it fits behind them too. 
Again, you know, little things please me. <laughs> oh, I'll have the words Christmas pudding somewhere. Whoops. And I think, just let me uh, ink this up. There we go. Christmas pudding. Put it on there like that. Yeah, so um, in fact, I think my nana used to make, she used to like make them as presents as well. So back in the day when she said they didn't, you know, they didn't always have much money, they used to uh, make either a little Christmas cake or a little p Christmas pudding for presents for the neighbours or something. And uh, she used to, I remember where she first used to live when I was only about five and uh, the old lady that lived next door to me Nanan, had a big old range so you'll have seen those big old ranges that they have like in Downton Abbey you know and, and they've got the fire in the middle and then they've got a little baking oven at the side and I used to take them round there with her before she moved to a different house uh, and uh, yeah everything used to get baked there round at Mrs Ward's old house in her range and uh, also she used to take bread round there as well uh, to bake so very fond memories yeah I'm sounding ancient now well <laughs> you know even my kids in the 20s think can't you know thank goodness I can't imagine me ever going and uh, putting stuff in a range oven so I mean they're all the rage again now aren't they they've got all the modern equivalents now but they were the originals okay now then David had passed me a bit of something earlier. I don't know where it is now. Thank you. And I did like it. I did like it, I think. And I think to there, shall we have that as like a belly band? We could have it as a belly band on that side. If it'll stick. This is some chiffon with Merry Christmas on it. I'm hoping, let's just put a bit more off. Oh, that went very straight, was it? Yeah. Take off some threads. Um, right, let's see. If I can stick that on. Is that a bit of paper so I don't... And um, I don't know what's happened to all my clips. Ah, there's one here. Let's put that on there. And then let's see. Spread it out a bit. Let's see if we can work that as a belly band. I'll load that a minute down. Let me scrap a paper. Right, let's see if that works on there. That was a nice, uh, nice idea that David found that. And then all I've got to do is put my uh, thing on and I was wondering whether I did deck the holes on this one let's have a quick look whereabouts it needs to be crikey that's sticking out a lot i didn't realize that was sticking out so much you know what i'm going to cut that down a bit because i think that's far too big that one yesterday i don't need it that big it's going in way a bit oh it's catching that's better. That's better. That's a bit. What? Well, that is a bit too much as well. Cut that off. So I think that goes in there. So we've got everything. We've got round elements. Again, we've got Christmas food and drink. We've got this gorgeous backdrop. Absolutely gorgeous. 
got my gorgeous robin and then we've got a little belly band there and actually I've got some little teeny weeny elements that I will cut out later no it'll fall through won't it because I've done it as a belly band no I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'm now going to go just go under there so it's All right. Okay, so I'm going to put these, I'll cut them out later. That works. Some little teeny tiny, teeny tiny, in fact, I'm going to put that on there because they'll get lost inside. Let me just round them off a bit better. I'm not very good at cutting rounds. I'm, oh, God, that's worse. That is worse, so just put that on. And that. These are all little elements from the add on kit, I believe. I think they are. Can't stab it. That's it. <laughs> okay. Okay, we've just got this to put on then. Let's see if that is. Uh... Needs to be in the middle. Let's get rid of that. I'm overrun with scissors now. There we go. I'm going to stick it out like that because then. Can we see that? Can we open it? No, it doesn't look right that way. Okay then, that way. Bit of glue on there. There we go. And there we go. I think that's I think that's a video, guys. I think these I better put all my scissors away okay so on here we've got the little elements down there which like I say I'll cut them out later uh, we've got our bird as the main main focal point I've got two rounds I've got Christmas pudding in this one and I'm, uh, I'm really happy with them let's just bring the other one in now on number 13 and again there we've got our lovely robin I love robins I think they're beautiful birds uh, I've enjoyed doing those so thank you Cara for three lovely suggestions so uh, it just needs for us to uh, do tomorrow's thank you thank you trusty assistant oh put your arm back in you've got a different jumper on blue today okay what have we got here oh so this is another one of the ones that Jovi gave us so creating with Jovi presents turtle dove and Christmas no oh I can't even read my own writing a Christmas ornament <laughs> it looks nothing like ornament crikey so presents turtle dove and Christmas ornaments that is a lovely one yeah I might do a bit of reverse applique again I think I've got a, a lovely cutout for a turtle dove yeah we'll see okay then thank you so much for joining me and uh, spending some of your Sunday here and thank you for you know for going along with this lovely journey of uh, December dailies I think it's uh, uh, we're really enjoying it as a good run down to Christmas so keep safe out there everybody and I'll see you tomorrow bye for now